Today we start talking about the basics of angles. We've already talked about how to name angles, now we're going to talk about their classifications and some vocabulary that surrounds angles. First, we have four ways to classify angles. We classify them as either acute, obtuse, right angles, or straight angles. An acute angle is any angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees and at the same time it's greater than zero degrees. So oftentimes we will write that as a, either a compound inequality or we'll write two separate inequalities that way. This would be considered an acute angle. This angle measures, for example, let's say it measures 55 degrees. An obtuse angle measures greater than 90 degrees, but also less than 180 degrees. An obtuse angle would look something along these lines and measure maybe 125 degrees, somewhere in between 90 and 180. Right angles measure exactly 90 degrees. There's no inequality with that. So a right angle would be illustrated one of two ways. We would either say it's 90 degrees, but oftentimes and more often in this class you'll know an angle is a right angle if there's that little square marking the corner, marking that vertex. That's representing that it's a right angle. And then a straight angle measures exactly 180 degrees. Essentially, a straight angle is a line. This angle here measures 180 degrees. We wouldn't necessarily label it like I did just here. If it was a straight angle, it's a line. That's one of the very few things in geometry that you can assume. You can assume a line is a straight angle and it's 180 degrees. Now, what are we going to ask you to do with that information? Number one down here in our critical thinking problems is a very good test or a quiz type question. I would expect this on both our next quiz and our next test. It says that angle A is an acute angle. What are the restrictions on its measure? So if I just draw an angle here and I call that vertex point A, this is now angle A. Since I'm saying that it's acute, the measure on its, or the restrictions on its measure are that the angle has to be less than 90 degrees and the measure of that angle also must be greater than zero degrees. That's it. Both of those are needed though. Those two are the restrictions on the angle's measure. This little lowercase m in front of the angle symbol is stating that it's the measure of the angle. Now, the second part is where things can get a little bit tricky. It's asking that the same angle A, it's telling you it has a measure of 4x plus 2 degrees. What are the restrictions on x? This is really two parts. It's a substitution problem and then solving inequalities. I know that this is the measure of the angle, so I'm going to substitute in, in both of these inequalities, 4x plus 2 for the measure of the angle. So instead of the measure of the angle being less than 90 degrees, I'm going to say that 4x plus 2, because that is the measure of the angle, is less than 90 degrees. I could do the same thing with my second inequality. I could say that 4x plus 2 is greater than 0 degrees. Now I have to remember my algebra of solving inequalities. The process is the same as solving equations. I want to get x by itself. I'll subtract 2 from both sides. That leaves 4x less than 88 
divide both sides by 4. Now I'm going to write my solution over here. And I'll actually have two solutions because there's going to be two inequalities that I'm solving. X must be less than 22. But that's not the only restriction. I have a restriction on X on the other side as well. If I subtract 2 from both sides, 4x must be greater than negative 2, and divide both sides by 4, I'm saying that this x must also be greater than negative 1 half. If you want to write it as a compound inequality, it would look like this greater than negative one-half less than 22. I'd accept either one of those as a final answer. Most of the time my students elect to just leave it as this and that's perfectly fine but I need both. I'll get you started with number two and then ask you to finish it. The process is the same, the idea is the same except now I'm telling you that the angle is obtuse so this time the restrictions on the measure of the angle since it's obtuse it must be greater than 90 degrees but at the same time the measure of that angle must be less than 180 degrees if I tell you that that angle has this measure of 5x plus 60 I will put that in for the measure of my angle. 5x plus 60 is greater than 90. 5x plus 60 is less than 180. Go ahead, press pause, try to solve those inequalities to give me my final restrictions on x. So we should find that the values of x that represent the restrictions are x is greater than 6 and x is less than 24. As a compound inequality, it would look like this. I'd accept either. Okay, moving on to the second page. I'm going to briefly introduce angle addition. This concept is the same exact thing as segment addition that we did before the first quiz. In segment addition, we would say that segment AB plus segment BC is equal to segment AC. Angle addition is the same thing. Small, in this case with segments it was AB plus small BC equals big. Angle addition, it's just that we're talking about angles instead of se segments. Here, I have a small angle here, and I have a small angle here. If I take this angle, 22 degrees, plus the other angle, 29 degrees, those two together add up and make up the entire angle which in this case would be 51 degrees. So the measure of angle PQS, remember that makes Q your vertex. So start at P, go to Q, go to S. That's angle PQS, 51 degrees. The second example is just the same thing but we're working backwards. I want to know the measure of angle WTH. So W to T to H is that angle here. If I want to know the measure of this angle, well, what do I know? I know that this is a 17 degree angle, and I know that angle WTS, so from W to T to S, that whole thing is 88 degrees. Angle addition would tell me that this angle, I don't know it, I could call it x if I wanted to, plus the other small angle, 17, equals the two together, or 88 degrees. 
subtract 17 from both sides, I get that x is equal to 71. So the measure of angle WTH is 71 degrees. Angle relationships. Three key vocab words here. Adjacent angles, vertical angles, and linear pair. Adjacent angles are two angles that share the same vertex and they have only one common side. Example. This is not anything but just one angle. I could call it angle A, B, C. For an angle to be adjacent to it, it must also have B as the vertex and share either ray BA or ray BC. I could put this ray in. Now angle 1 and angle 2 are adjacent. They share vertex B. They share ray BC. That's one common side. Vertical angles. These are really important. We are going to use these a lot. Non-adjacent angles. So that means they don't share a common side. But they are formed by intersecting lines. So they are still going to form or be formed at that intersection point, which means they'll share a vertex. They just will not share a common side. Examples. Two intersecting lines. Here's a line. Here's a second line. My vertical angles are the ones that are non-adjacent. Angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. Angles 1 and 2 are adjacent. They share a vertex here and a side. But angle 1 and angle 3 are not. Those are considered vertical angles. Angle 1 and angle 3. But be careful with the word vertical because it's not always up and down. Angle 4 and angle 2 are also vertical angles because they are also formed by intersecting lines and they do not share a common side. Why are vertical angles important? Mostly because all vertical angles are congruent. That means they have equal measure. So in this example we'd say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 and angle 4 is congruent to angle 2. In a minute we'll look at some examples of that. The last type here are linear pair. A linear pair are, they are adjacent angles whose non-common side form a line. So they are sharing a vertex, they share a side. The other two sides form a line. Here's a line. That's a linear pair. This is the side they share. Here's the vertex that they share. Why are they important? Since they form a line, they form a straight angle. And straight angles equal 180 degrees. So if that's angle 1 and that's angle 2, we would say that angle 1, or the measure of angle 1, plus the measure of angle 2, equals 180 degrees. With vertical angles, we would say that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3, and the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 2. The next video will go over the examples on the next page.